Shalom, we give all the praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai Bahasham, Rachel Kodash, Yahweh being the name of the Heavenly Father, whom the world even calls God, and Yahweh Shai being the name of His only begotten Son, whom the world even calls Jesus Christ, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, and peace and mercy to the house of David the elect. Those 144,000 men uh, putting their lives on the line to push out this word and sincerity and truth. And those one third of the men, women, and children that are listening, learning, and believing and helping with all sincerity and humility to you all. I say shalom and greetings. All right. Um, so, you know, Lord willing, this lesson is edifying. Uh, I, uh, you know, I'm, I'm out here at this park and, uh, you know, I, I was pondering on what to do a lesson on that. These birds are deep out here. I'm not just, you know, I'm seeing, but look, they're all over the place. But um, you know, through the spirit, I, I was trying to think of a lesson. All right, and um, I, I just opened my my sword, and it, and it went straight to a lesson. Something that I've been wanting to do a lesson on for quite some time now. So hey, Lord, when this is edifying, and hey, who is two? Whoever is two, man. Hey, that's up to you, man. It's through the spirit. That's why the, the spirit speaks expressly, man. You know, this uh, this is a two-edged sword, man. All right. Uh, but uh, I'm going to start with this uh, verse. This is uh, Mark Mark two, and I'm going to start at twenty-one. It said, "No man also soweth a piece of new cloth on an old garment, else the new piece that be filled up, filled it up, taketh away from the old, and the rent is made worse. And no man putteth new wine into old bottles." Else the new wine doth brace, burst the bottles, and the wine is spilled, and the bottles will be marred. But new wine must be put into new bottles. All right, so this is a, a metaphor. All right, this is a metaphor from uh, Yahweh Shai, our Lord, you know, basically uh, making a comparison between men and bottles, right? And so uh, typically, when you're talking about old bottles, it typically refers to, uh, you know, people of age, you know, el elder individuals. But, you know, this can also be young men, too. Young men who will, maybe their father uh, indoctrinated them with a certain way of life from uh, the youth up. You know, so they automatically... So, like, you had a phone call. But, um, yeah, usually old bottles are referring to elderly men who can't get this word. And, you know, there's a lot of men of age who, who come around now that are finding the truth out about the Bible. You know, that... And I was saying, uh, say, for instance, you know, uh, a man has been... a uh, you know, off into Christianity his whole life, his whole life, you know, um, and, you know, he's been fully set on the name, Jesus Christ, right, so now when you try to tell him that the name of the Lord is Yahweh Shai, that, that's new wine for him, man, all right, in that old bottle, and so that new wine in that old bottle, what will happen, it breaks, man, all right, the process is too much for him, that's too, that's, that overtakes him, man, so it says, no man put a new wine into old bottles, else the new wine doth burst the bottle. So when you get new wine, you're supposed to put it in new bottles. And, and by new bottles, <laughs> this is mainly speaking about young men. Let me go to um, Isaiah, what is that? <coughs> Salakia. Isaiah 20, 28 or 29. You know, this is new information, ultimately. The wine is, uh, you know, and I'm going to go actually to Matthew uh soon as well uh but matthew 28 and verse 9 it says whom shall he teach knowledge and whom shall he make to understand doctrine them that be weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast all right so hey you young men all right it says uh uh out of the mouth of babes shall praise be perfected you know so uh young men all right uh now does this mean that you you can't be a certain age because you know we we got um uh, elderly man in our camp, uh, well, not in our camp, but he's on the other side. You know, he's 50 something years old, 52, 53 years old, you know, and he, he's able to receive it. But we also have, I mean, you know, there are young men out there that are 10 years old that are pushing the word right now. So this lets you know your age ultimately has nothing to really do with it. This really comes down to the uh, delusions that the Heavenly Father has put upon somebody and them being blinded from understanding and seeing the truth. So the Lord has created their spirit to be in the form of an old bottle where that new wine, this new information, this new spirit, this new understanding will break, will burst them open. It's too much for their minds to uh, receive, you know, uh, because another thing is what they say. Um, I forget how the saying goes, but, uh, you know, it's stuck in your ways. 
You know, an old dog can learn new tricks, you know, so to speak, because they learned something so long ago. So to teach them new tricks, you know, the older you get, the harder, the harder it is to retain information. Okay, that's one thing. The older, like when you're a child, they say child's minds are like sponges. Okay, and so even as young men now, our minds are like sponges because we were, we found out about the truth. You know, usually men are, you know, anywhere from, I've heard most men I seem to run into fall coming to the truth in their, uh, their 20s, their early 20s. All right, but of course, you got men that come in later, you got men that come in as, as teenagers, you know, uh, but nonetheless, it says, um, Else the new wine does birth the bottles and the wine is spilled. Okay, so that means now this information, all right, this uh, wine is spilled. It's, it's for naught. You know, nobody likes spilled wine. When you got a, you know, uh, wine spills out, then what? You lost it, man. You know, you can't get that back. It says, and the bottles will be marred. And the bottles are referring to, uh, you know, the men that can't understand the truth. All right, by telling them so called blacks, Native Americans, and Hispanics are Israelites, you know, that they're marred because that word marred goes into being uh, 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 let's see what's the word to be to be hurt or damaged you know if you have a marred bottle like you know when you get something new it says it's in mint condition right it means it doesn't have any imperfections but now that man he's not even going to be the same man because he's now heard the truth okay and now he has to live his he has to be comfortable living his life based on a lie man all right even if he knows the truth, it says, but the new wine must be put into new bottles, right? So the Lord gave his information so that young men will be able to receive it. Um, all, all, ultimately, all men, you know, uh, as far as the nation of Israel. Um, now let me go over to, uh, I want to get the one in Matthew as well, but let me go to Matthew 25 first. Uh, this is Matthew, the 25th chapter. And I started one. It says, then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom and five of them were wise and five of them were foolish you know and this is ultimately talking about uh the elect are the five that were wise all right and the these other people the servants that knew the lord's will okay according to luke the 12th chapter and about 47 went down it talks about those that knew the, the lord's will and didn't uh prepare themselves and weren't watching you know they were found lacking okay and so it says, they that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them, you know? So they don't, they don't have any, they don't have any oil. So that's, that's what's going to happen in the times to come. They, you know, you're not going to have the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of the Lord. You know, he's going to take some of his, some of you people, he's going to take his name out of your mouth, right? It says, uh, they that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. What's the point of a, of a lamp? And you don't got no oil, man. If you're in the dark, what's the, I don't know if you brothers ever used a lantern or anything like that, but you know, lanterns, they have oil in them. And so you have to, the oil has to touch the, uh, or even if you have, a, there are older lighters before they created these, before they created these big lighters, you had, um, what are those damn lighters called? Ah, that's going to kill me because I got like two or three of them. But, um, you know, they were the, the square uh, metal ones. And then you like when you, they had them in movies, like when you flick them, they, uh, they, the, the fire automatically comes on, which necessarily isn't the case. You had to like, it's a certain way you had to open it and twist it and spin the thing all at once. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I had to learn the trick myself at one point in time. And I can't believe I can't remember the names of those right now. Um, but nonetheless, with those lighters, inside of those is a, um, it's an area of like white, uh, it's not tissue. I don't want to say it's tissue. I know it's like they, sometimes you can get it from a tree. They have skin it off of a tree and it's basically made to make uh so you can kindle a fire you know what i'm saying but in the bottom of those you have to have um uh for butane all right you have to have butane in the bottom of those and so the butane touches the little white part and that's how it's lit the same goes for these lamps these lamps that, that we're speaking of in this right so, but this oil this knowledge wisdom and understanding all right this truth okay what, what's the point of having a lamp? What's the, so you got a mind, you got a, a willingness to understand, but you don't, you don't, you're not willingness to receive and to uh, receive the word that's been imparted unto man. So you basically, you're going to be lights out in the day of the Lord. All right. You're not going to be prepared in the day of the Lord. Okay. It says, uh, but the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps and Lord willing, we be those wise men that got the, uh, the oil with us, man. All right. Especially on the day of the Lord's return. Okay, it says, while the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. 
And at midnight, there was a cry made. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. And see, it says there was a cry made. And we know, you know, um, what does it say? What is that? Um, it was a great cry. Um, I'm trying to think. There's a, there's a precept that goes right with that. You know, oh, First Thessalonians. That's what it is. You know, First Thessalonians. You know, and I guess you can kind of touch on that with the Isaiah 40. 42 as well, if I'm not mistaken. But let me get this First Thessalonians real quick. First uh, Thessalonians uh, chapter 4 and verse uh, 16. It says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of the Most High, and the dead in Hamashiach shall rise first. You see that? So it says, And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold the bridegroom. Come, who's the bridegroom? Yahweh Shah. It says, Go ye out to meet him. Right? Because what is it saying? Revelation 1 and 7. Every eye shall see him when he returns, man. Okay? So go ye out to meet him. So now as the elect look up and say, Call all your house, Hashem, y'all shy. We've done what, the, uh, what you've asked of us, Lord. We served. We uh, we took hold on his word. We taught it how you asked us to teach. We believed. We followed you with faith. We followed your law, statutes, and commandments. We believed in the grace and the miracles. You know? So Lord, have mercy on us, right? It says, then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. So they, they, the wise, you know what I'm saying, got up. It says, trim your lamps. That means they got themselves prepared. They were ready in themselves because the, the, the Messiah was here, man. The bridegroom was here. It says, and the fool is said unto the wise, give us of your oil for our lamps are gone out. Right? So that's what these people try to do, especially these other Israelite camps. They're, that's what they're going to try to do. Right? Spiritually speaking. You know, they want some of our oil, but it says in that time, we're going to, uh, the, the, the men of the Lord, the prophets, my tongues are going to cleave to the roof of their mouths, man. Okay. And so is it, no, nah, we ain't got no oil to give. We've been trying to, we, and that's the thing. We've been diligent in, in, in trying to provide the oil day in and day out. You know, that's the thing that this story may not hint on. We, they, it's, it's, yeah, look, I'm not going to add to the book. <laughs> so I don't want to say that, but, um, nonetheless, imagine this story. Whereas they were saying to the uh, the five wise virgins were saying, hey, man, you, you guys need to go and go and uh, get you some oil, you know, you know, go. Uh, actually, it says that in the next verse. But it, the thing is, it tells them at that time to go and buy, buy the oil. But really, in reality, for this whole story, they've been telling them day, for days and weeks and hey, get your oil. The Lord going to come get your oil. The Lord going to come. But they didn't they didn't listen. It says, uh, but the wise answered saying, not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. All right. Hey, the elect not going to be beamed up with the two thirds too. It's only space. It's only, an, even though it's going to be spacious on the chariot, it's only space enough on the chariot enough for, uh, the elect, man. All right. That number is perfected. Uh, the, the, the day of salvation is predestinated for the one, the, uh, 144,000 men and the one third of men, women, and children. Ain't no, ain't no additional room, whatever great number that is. Ain't no additional room on there, all right. Ain't no one extra seat, okay. For besides Yahweh save Yahweh Shai and the angels, you know. But ain't, ain't no extra seats. Ain't no extra room, all right. It says, um, but go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. But see, that ain't the the, the thing is. They said, go to them that sell. So now they're going to go to somebody else and they ain't got the good oil, right? You know, when you got good oil, you got like, you got the extra virgin olive oil. You got the grapeseed oil, you know, but they giving out fucking, uh, you know, that baseline uh, grape value vegetable oil, man. You know, the stuff that is not really going to be good for you, that canola, you know, it says, and while they went to buy, the bride room came. So this is them getting caught sleeping, man. All right. It says, and while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went, went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut, right? So this is uh, the Lord shutting the door on all of those unbelievers, all of those people that waited to the last minute, all of those that were too late in the repentance, you know? And this really goes, you know, those old bottles are those uh, also going to be men found slacking, man, found without the oil because they, they, they didn't want to receive this information. Okay, it says afterward came also the other virgins saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. You see that? So that's why you got to stay on your watch, man. Okay, old or young, man, ain't, ain't no excuse for that, man. All right, but so a lot of you elderly men, 
you're about to be judged, man. And there are young men telling you this. And that's another thing. It's when, as an elder, it's a, it's a place of pride that comes upon you uh, as an elder man in this society, right? And, and, boy, I was out here reading the Bible, <clears throat> reading the Bible when you was still in your daddy's nutsack. They say stuff like that, right? But what First Timothy 4 and 12 says, let no man despise thy youth, man. All right, just because you're young, all right? <laughs> you know, a Lord was not one of those men. One time this chick asked me, how old were you? And I told her roughly 12 to 13,000 years old. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And she looked at me like, what the hell? Like, who gives you answers like that? But see, that's the thing. Our spirits were here far before you, the, the flesh that you behold, man. Okay? But uh, let me go to Matthew 9, uh, in verse 16. I started 17. It says... It says, neither do men put new wine into old bottles, else the bottles break and the wine runneth out and the bottles perish. But they that, but they put new wine into new bottles and both are preserved. See that? So now the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding is preserved because the Lord has entrusted his word into predominantly young men in order to take this thing, man. But see, that's the thing. As you grow into an older man, of you, like well, Apostle Tahar and Apostle Gabar, Apostle Ramla, Apostle Rakar. They weren't elderly men when they got this truth, man. You know, they were 23, 24, you know, things like that, man. Able to receive and soak up this information, man. That new wine was put into new bottles, okay? But now you, hey, man, look, I'm not trying to call my grandma an old bottle. You know, I love my grandma. I made the Lord have mercy on her. But she, uh, you know, when I tried to, when I first came into the truth, and I was trying to give her some of the breakdowns on the name of the Lord and, you know, uh, uh, who we were, who calls Jesus a black, so-called black man. You know, certain things were hard for her to receive. She ain't necessarily scoff, but she ain't, she wasn't with it, so to speak. That's because she's been in churches for her whole life, man. All right. She, she, was, she was born in Louisiana. You know, her parent, her, I think, believe her parents or grandparents were, were slaves and her grandparents were slaves. You know what I'm saying? So she, she's based on that sla slavery plantation Christianity, you know? And so this is this is where people gonna fall short. What you mean I can't eat shrimp and pork chop no more? You know, the old man, an elderly, an old bottle, I tell you he don't want to give up the truth just because uh, he's learned this way of lifestyle for this long, and he can't. He don't want to give up pork chops. You know, and for that reason alone, he don't he don't want to get down with it. You know, the way that he taught was wrong. Oh, you you've been learning the Sabbath day was this day when it was really something else. You know, those things are hard for men. You know. Those things are hard for people, man. But that's why the Lord, hey, you better receive it. Because if not, you're going to be one of them them, uh, them uh, virgins without that oil. And the Lord going to say, verily not so. I know you not. You know, I don't know you, man. I want to get to a story real quick, though, about a young man. Uh, you know, because it goes into like, about the elderly. This is uh, Job 32. And I'm going to start at uh, verse, verse 3. This is uh, about... Uh, Elihu, uh, the younger of the elder men that were with Job in the time of his persecution from the Lord and Satan, right? It says, also against his three friends was his wrath kindled because they had found no answer and yet had, con had condemned Job. Now Elihu had waited till Job had spoken because they were elder than he. See that? So when you have, uh, what does the scripture say? Speak not much in the presence of an elder. So Elihu was uh, being wise. He was like, well, letting them speak and eventually, that's when he's like, okay, I'm, I'm going to speak up, right? It says, when Elihu saw that there was no answer in the mouth of these three men, then his wrath was kindled. See, he so Job was saying certain things, and, and they couldn't respond, so it, he, got, he got heated. The Lord put the spirit on him, man. That's when it says his wrath was kindled, the Lord put the spirit on him, man. It says, and Elihu, the son of Barashel, the Buzite, answered and said, I am young, and ye are very old. Wherefore, I was afraid and does not show you my opinion. See, that's it. So y'all, y'all supposed to be elders. And this, mind you, at this time, these men were in the truth. These men knew that they were Israelites. Okay? So he says, I'm very young. Y'all old. So y'all supposed to be one school than me. I was afraid to even say something. Y'all supposed to be, like, but now I'm going to show y'all what I think. Since you all too, too, don't want to speak up and have nothing to say. It says, I said, they should speak and multitude of years should teach wisdom. So is this walk that we have in this life, we need to be walking around with uh, men like the apostles giving out uh, teaching wisdom, man. All right, but now you got young men, now you got teenagers out here schooling people on knowledge and wisdom. That's not the way it, it's supposed to be. Actually, let me go to, I'm gonna hold, hold that verse, I mean that chapter, I'm, I'm gonna go back to that. 
Um, you know, because a lot of grievous things were done to our elders too. You know, it talks about um, this is Lamentations 5 and uh, 14. It says the elders have ceased from the gate, yet the young men from their music. You see that? The elders have ceased from the gate because when you read Amos 5 and 10, it says they hate him that rebuketh in the gate. So in the gates, when you go into the gates of the city, that's where the elders are supposed to be found. That's where the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding was. It's supposed to say wisdom cried out in the streets. But now the elders have ceased from the gates. Now we only got, now we got the true elders and apostles of Great Millstone doing this work. But hey, man, you can't just go into, uh, you know, now you can go into your average city and find the men that know the Lord. But they aren't all looking like elderly men. They all don't have the hoary head. They all aren't. But in the kingdom, you know what I'm saying? You, the elect are going to be the uh, the uh, government of the Most High, man. But that thing is see. So now, you know, when uh, you have a young man and uh, a young man, I mean, uh, a father and a son, the son not going to be having it. We ain't going to have no son schooling his father on the truth in the kingdom. You know what I'm saying? That's not going to happen. Now you got that now. We got to school all of our dads and let them know uh, what the Bible is really talking about. You know, that's that's out of course. All right. It says, uh, but there is a spirit in man and the inspiration of Almighty give them understanding. So all of this is inspiration of the scriptures that comes from it comes from the Most High Yahweh. All right. It says, great men are not always wise, and neither do the age understand judgment. That's that that old bottle mentality, man. Okay, because just because you're great don't mean that you're a wise man. Just because you got power and riches and a and a stature and a reputation don't mean that you're all, that don't mean that you're a wise man. It says neither do the age understand judgment. So just because you got some years on you don't mean you understand how the Heavenly Father gets down and how the things in your life happened and why they happened. It said, therefore, I said, hearken to me. I also will show my opinion. Behold, I've waited for your words. I give ear to your reasons whilst you search out what to say. Yea, I attended unto you. And behold, there was none of you that convinced Job or that is or answered his words. Let you should say, we have found out wisdom. The most high thrusting them down, not man. Now he that he hath not directed his words against me, neither will I answer him with your speeches. See, hey man, at the end of the day, it's supposed to be older men being able to give you, being able to rebuke uh, other older men. You know what I'm saying? That's what's supposed to be happening. It's not supposed to be young men having to rebuke older men. You know, it's a part that that's a part of shame. You know, and we have these elderly men walking down our street, and we we have to tell them, hey, grow your beard out. You know, hey, uh, follow the law. You know, hey, believe in the Lord. You know, that's a shame, man. We shouldn't have to do that. But this is all inspiration is given by the Most High. So you just got to be grateful. He says, uh, you know, be be thankful and hopeful that your names are written in heaven. So at the end of the day, we just glad that the Lord had mercy on us, put his spirit on us, man. It says they were amazed. They answered no more. They left off speaking. So he left them speechless, man. All right. When I waited for they spake not, but stood still and answered no more. So he paused and see what they were going to say. But they had nothing else to say, man. You know, young man, this is, this is the same thing that happens on the highways and the byways. It says, I said, I will answer also my part. I will also show mine opinion for I am full of matter. The spirit within me constraineth me. Behold, my belly is as wine, which hath no vent. It is ready to burst like new bottles. See, there's a new bottles reference. But see, this is like this is basically he couldn't hold his peace anymore. All right. You know, he said, my belly is as wine, which have no vent. Like, I got to speak up now because y'all aren't saying anything. And that's what we're doing now. We have to speak up because our nation, the elder, the uh, uh, elderly men in the world of our nation, they aren't speaking up. You know, they're remaining silent while the world is going into chaos and our people are being destroyed and our Lord is on the way. OK, so now we have to speak up in, in their stead, man. OK, it says, I will speak that I may be refreshed. I will open my lips and answer let me not, I pray you, accept any man's person, neither let me give flattering titles unto man. So the scriptures say the Most High is not a respecter of person. So he's like, hey, let me not, I pray you, uh, accept any man's person. So just because you just because you have age mean that we supposed to accept you? You know? Nah, man, that ain't how it works, man. You got to be accepted of Yahweh Hashem Shai, man. Okay? You got to be, we got we to gotta see the spirit within you. We got to see the word that's in you, man. It says, it says, for I know not to give flattering titles and doing so my maker would soon take me away. And that's what the apostles be talking about, flattering words and flattering titles, you know. So it says the Lord will take us away. So we ain't out here to flatter, flatter men, flatter ourselves. We're not here for that, man. We're trying to give all praises to Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Okay, point blank, period. So, um, you know, I think that's all the precepts that I had on my mind.
So, hey, Lord willing, this lesson was edifying. For you elderly brothers out there that do believe, man, hey, keep believing and keep fighting, man. The Lord can have mercy on you doing. So watch, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour when the Son of Man cometh, man. So, hey, prepare yourselves, trim your lamps, get them ready, because our Lord is on the way. So with that, I want to give all the praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai by Hashem, Rechakwadash, double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, and peace and mercy to the house of David the elect. Keep fighting, brothers. We almost about here. Your call, your call, your call, Baba Ball. Until next time, Shalom.